Why hello, people of Earth, how are you doing? Today, we're doing a top five Wednesday video children's books. And I got my five books here, and I'm gonna talk about some books I read as a kid. And yeah. <laughs> First up, we have The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester. Um, I was actually read, this book was read to me by my seventh grade teacher, Mrs. Cloud slash Mrs. Jackson. She got married and then she got divorced. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, so she <laughs> read this to us and I think I was um, in, not seventh grade, I think I was in fifth grade because our I went to private school for middle school and elementary school, so like I can mix up the teachers just because like you had you you basically had the same group of teachers, but one was your homeroom one year. If that makes sense. Anyway, this book has a really special place in my heart because my uncle gave me this copy and he he really liked it and he has like a little note in here and he passed away due to pancreatic cancer and I like I like this book just because he gave it to me and his little note in here that he gave me because I think he gave me this on my birthday and he has like he would always make me math like worksheets for my birthday because he's a math professor and um, I was good at math and that might sound kind of weird but it was just our thing and I really like it. So anyway, this book, honestly, it's been so long since I've read it. I can't really tell you exactly what it's about, but it's basically about this dude, this kid. I think it's a, the, see, the cover looks like a grown man, but I remember thinking the guy was a kid. So don't quote me, but a, a dude, he's in a toll booth, I think. And then he like ends up somewhere else. This is a horrible synopsis, but it was pretty good, and I, it was it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. For number two, I have Pie by Sarah Weeks. I got this book in third grade by my third grade teacher. After we came back from winter break, she gave us all books. Like we each had a book at our desk, and this. This was the book that she gave me, and I loved this book. I did it for a book report soon after, and I have a lot of good memories with this one. It's it's kind of, it's very interesting, okay? It's very interesting in that it's a little, I don't want to say edgy. That's not the right word. There's just, there's more intrigue in this book than meets the eye. It's a little bit of a mystery, you know, um, about the recipe of, I think, the grandmother? No, aunt. Aunt. Of the main character's aunt. It has something to do with the recipe. And I forget the details again. <laughs> I I read all these books a really long time ago. But I remember that this, like, piqued my interest and that other books just haven't. And, yeah. I recommend, if you feel like picking up, like, a kid's book. I don't know. Number three, I have The K by Theodore Taylor. I really like this book. My sixth grade, eighth grade, I think both. For sixth and seventh grade, I had the same teacher and she had us read this in sixth grade and oh my God, this was such a great book. It has to do with the theme of racism and between um, a white bl blind boy and African-American man or black man I'm not sure um, and basically what happens is that um, they were both on this boat and they crash on this island and they both have to survive and the boy is racist and he learns not to be racist and yeah it's a really good book um, again it's one of those plots where you're like where I haven't heard of that before at all and like Pi, it like piqued my interest in a way that other books that I read at this time just didn't 
You know, it, it was it was really good. It's super short. You can breeze right through it. Highly recommend to read this even now, if you even if you don't like kids literature or whatever. Highly recommend. Now we're at number four, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. I know that's French, and I just can't say it. I think we've all we've all heard of this little book, be especially because there was a the movie adaptation that a lot of people saw. Did I see it? No, I did not because I didn't really like this book. <laughs> but um, whenever I think of my childhood books, for whatever reason, this comes to mind. I've heard that the series like gets really bad, and this is like the best one. It's as I've grown older, I think I've learned to appreciate this book more just because of the pure like imagination of it towards like the last half of it, the last 50 pages, like damn, damn, it, it actually went there, you know? It's like the kid's version of 1984 or something, that's not a good comparison at all, but it's definitely weird, it's definitely, I, I do appreciate it more as I've grown older, and I recommend this if you like other dimensions, like if you're into sci-fi and Lord of the Rings, I think you would like this, but I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't know, I, I don't know, <laughs> uh, it, it's been a minute, but I remember having mixed feelings about it. I liked having read it, but I didn't really like reading it. Do you know what I mean? It was one of those books. So for my last one, number five, Macarons at Midnight by Suzanne Nelson. I read the other book by her, Pop Crush, and I actually won this in a giveaway. And it's actually signed by the author, which is really cool. And to me, and it, it was really cool when I won. I I really like this book. Like, I remember having really good memories of it. I read it in my freshman year of high school. And I remember that because, like, I read Pop Crush, like, a while before that. And I didn't realize how much, like, I've grown in my reading. Because when I opened this, like, the type was, like, you know, that double space. Like, it was definitely a younger kid's book like it was for kids and I was like a freshman in high school reading it so it kind of made me realize like I had grown up like I had um I felt older when I was reading this than I did when I was reading Pop Crush. I don't remember exactly what it's about all I know is that there's a romance and it has to do with like she meets this dude at um a macaron shop like they, they're having an opening night and she goes in and meets this guy and I think they're they, she's like masked somehow I think it had something like they're masked so <clears throat> they like the dude doesn't know what she looks like so when she goes back to school it's like this whole thing if I remember correctly could be completely off but I'm pretty sure that's what happened again it's been four years since I've read this, but um, I I do I do really like I I like it I really really like it a lot. When I think of like my favorite childhood books, I think of this book and Pop Crush automatically just because I remember they like for whatever reason they just held like a place in my heart even to this day. Don't know why. I think it's just that when I was younger, I was like. I would say way more selective in what I read just because it would it took me to a lot <clears throat> words I think what I'm trying to say is that when I was younger you know I didn't know what booktube was booktube was barely a thing <laughs> uh, when I was younger I don't even know if it was a thing and if it was I didn't really have I didn't watch YouTube when I was younger at all and I wasn't really I wasn't exposed to how much co book content there is out there through booktube. I kind of just looked through the Scholastic catalog that we had in middle school 
and I would read the little synopsis and if I look if I liked it then I asked my dad like hey can I get this book and yeah when I was younger he would buy me books and stuff because I had um I have dyslexia but when I was younger it was really really bad and reading helped counteract it and it helped um it was just really good for me so he would buy books so that I could you know I guess practice and counteract my dyslexia so that's why <laughs> and there was a reason for it and I I read pretty much everything that I um could get my hands on or that I because I knew what I liked I knew what I liked when I was a kid now um it's kind of harder because I'm also I'm introduced to so many more books because of booktube not to mention my friends recommend me books and sometimes I read a book just to do a video for this channel like I'm reading after which is uh it's trash just just spoiler alert I wouldn't I would have DNF'd it if um I was reading it by myself um and I didn't have a YouTube channel but um there are plenty of books that I read now just to like understand just to have an opinion on but when I was younger I didn't give a crap I didn't care I just read whatever I wanted and you know I would DNF books without like usually without like a second thought now it's just like I need to finish I need to finish but when I was a kid I just read what I wanted and I <laughs> and I think now I have a harder time with that just because I have less time to read so sometimes a book that I want to read just doesn't get read and then a year passes and another year passes and I still haven't read it and that's just how life works out sometimes but anyway that was my top five Wednesday I hope all of you guys have a wonderful day let me know what you read as a kid what kids books do you um like let me know I'll be reading responding I like hearing what other people have to say because we all had really different childhoods and some people read completely different books than I did, and it's fascinating. So I'll see you all later. Goodbye. I'll see you in the next one.